Cardry. Um, I'm from Wolverhampton and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at 11 years old. I started on to insulin therapy twice a day and was asked to test my blood sugar by finger prick four times a day. I was in shock at first. I, I'd never heard of diabetes. I didn't know anybody who had diabetes and neither did anybody in my family. So um, I was at the stage where I was thinking, how is this going to impact me and what does it even mean? I'd heard the word injections and obviously as an 11 year old, you thought of that's quite scary. Um, so I was, I was worried more than anything. Well, I was quite poorly when I was diagnosed. So I was in hospital for the, for the first few weeks. Um, and then it was pretty much adjusting my diet, finding out what foods were high in carbohydrates, what I could eat, what I couldn't eat. Um, and informing the school was, the, was probably the scariest thing and, and speaking to other people about it and telling them, oh, you know, I've, I've got to go away and do this insulin and I've got to have this snack at this time and I've got to eat at certain times. And it was just all foreign nature really to me. I think at first I thought that eventually it would take some time to get used to and eventually I would get used to it but I never really came to terms with it and I buried my head in the sand, I had pressure from siblings and parents who were asking me have you tested your blood, have you done your insulin, have you done this, have you done that and I would always shy away from it and just cause arguments really and say leave me, leave me alone, leave me to do it myself, I need to do it in my own time but that time never really came. I was on twice a day insulin at first, which um, I found difficult, but I, I'd stuck to the regime of a set amount of insulin to take at certain amount, certain times of the day. Um, but when the regime became more difficult and I was moved to the flexible insulin regime where you had to carb count and sort of make the decisions yourself based on your blood sugars, I found that really difficult to work with and I ended up burying my head in the sand. And, there was occasions where I missed insulin doses and didn't test my blood for a number of days. I went into hospital with um, ketoacidosis on a number of occasions. Ketoacidosis is a life-threatening condition due to me not taking my insulin. That led on to further problems which started with my eyes deteriorating and having to have retinopathy which included laser treatment and injections to my eyes. Um, I also got renal failure which resulted in me going on to dialysis for a few years while I waited on a transplant list to have a kidney and pancreas transplant which I've now received. So the treatment um, itself was really restricting in terms of your lifestyle. So dialysis you have overnight, every night for eight hours at home. So once you're hooked up to the machine you can't leave that room. Um, so you're there until your treatment is finished and then you go once a month to the Rena Home Therapies at New Cross Hospital and they do your weight and your blood pressure and things like that and just ensure that everything's going smoothly and then we're up to having your kidney transplant. I was on the, um, the waiting list for just over two years. Um, I did get called in four times, I was matched to organs that they didn't go ahead for numerous reasons so it's a it's a trip back and forth to the hospital with the nervousness that you're about to have a major operation but it doesn't always go ahead the first time when it did eventually go ahead you know it was an operation that was nine hours long to do a kidney and a pancreas transplant and I was in hospital um, for two weeks which is actually quite quick for recovery I, I know people that have been for a lot longer and I was really lucky to have this opportunity um, it doesn't always work, mine have both been successful. The kidney and pancreas are working well at the moment, but there were people who were in hospital with whose operations didn't work and they were um, having to revert back to insulin and dialysis following those traumatic operations. The, the transplants don't last forever. Um, they, they aim to get five years out of the pancreas and, and 10 years out of the kidney before having to either revert back to the treatment that you were on before or if you're lucky enough, go back onto a waiting list to have the opportunity to have further operations to try and get more organs. Um, when I was in hospital, I was the only one out of a bio four whose pancreas actually was successful. 
um, the other three people had failed, so it doesn't always work. Um, I'm now at the hospital um, once every fortnight still, um, having the constant checks to make sure your medication's at the right level, um, your weight and your blood pressure under control. And there is a risk associated to the medication that you are put on following the transplant, which is the um, sort of anti-rejection medication that lowers your immune system. So you've got the constant risk of infection and um, illnesses and things like that, and there's a, a wider risk of um, like skin cancers and things like that due to the, the side effects of the medication that you take following the transplant. And that's just a worry that you know you've constantly got that worry in the back of your mind when you're going out. Are you covered up? Have you got sun cream on? Have you got your medication with you? What what's going to happen in a few years time? You know I'm only 28 now, um, I've, and I have got young children. I'm not going to have to go through the, the procedures of having these operations again. I know that diabetes is really difficult to, to manage and come to terms with, um, but don't bury your head in the sand and make the same mistakes that I did. There are healthcare professionals and, and charities out there, such as Diabetes UK, that you can turn to for help, as you don't see the impacts that it's having on your body until it's too late. Thank you for listening to my journey and please reach out for help.